Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Live Ultralight Podcast. Today, we have a not-so-special guest by the name of Daniel Bartholomew Becker <laughs> on the podcast. No, Dan is a, is a dear friend of mine. We've uh, we've actually got to backpack a few times, and we have him in our studio in yeah. Utah. So, so we convinced him to leave Wisconsin for mm-hmm. a moment. Yeah, and, gladly. And I mean, I love Wisconsin, but you guys don't know what you've got out here. It's so awesome. It's so nothing awesome. special. It's nothing. Whatever. Ever. Okay. <laughs> you just, you just, <clears throat> yeah. For, for those of you that don't know Dan, he runs a YouTube channel that is highly successful. Um, crossed a hundred thousand subs sometime this year. Mm, yeah. And yep. uh, he's killing it. He's killing it. He's got some awesome content. Personally, I mean, I mean, just on what I appreciate from Dan is he's super authentic. Um, he tells it out how it is. And uh super relatable and I, f- oh. I feel like that's that's and you're kind of comical i mean you're good oh. on, you're good on camera I okay guess say. wow um yeah. but but yeah I, highly I, flattered here if you Very haven't flattered. seen dan's channel which i'd be highly surprised if you haven't make sure to go check it out but uh what i miss well, who who's dan oh, becker man uh supermodel uh bodybuilder the, the uh, makeup team did just yeah, leave the building yeah uh no <laughs> far from it <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious of a lot of things, but I, I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper. I'm sure oh. people, when they go to YouTube, okay. they get a good idea of who Dan is. I mean, you don't Uh-oh. hide anything, but, but uh, we've had some conversations on trail and, and over food and whatnot that uh, I enjoyed, and, and I feel like people have no idea. Oh, like, the deep, dark secrets around the campfire, um, those conversations? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can like, tap out at any moment. Oh, um, oh you just, man. You just let me know. But, okay. Uh, Tell me for a second about how you got started on YouTube, your first video. Oh, man. Okay. So that was um, <clears throat> I my first official attempt at an actual YouTube video. I had filmed like a backpacking trip video, just kind of fun video, just to put it on for me. Nothing special. But my actual video is I had, it was like November of 2018. I just learned something about backpacking and Wanted to see if I could find something online about more about it. Couldn't find anything. And I thought, you know, I wonder if anybody else would want to know how to do this. So I made a video, put it online, and came back a day later and saw that people actually watched it. It's like, when you wow. said people, like five, yeah, six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, five, six, not many. Oh, okay. Just, okay. I just couldn't believe that anybody clicked on the video. I, my goal wasn't to start a YouTube channel. I'd never intended to start a YouTube channel, ever. Like, it wasn't like, hey, I'm going to be a YouTuber. It just, you know, I started posting videos. And I'm highly addictive personality <laughs> in a good way. Uh, but yeah, then I just started uh, posting more videos. I got addicted. I was just like, let's, let's post another one, see what happens. And then that was it. Yeah. Like video two is, is what? Um, golly, man, I don't remember it. Now you're, now you're pulling out the archives here. <laughs> Gotta get the cobwebs off. Of yeah, it man, I was probably something, probably something like total clickbait. Like, I don't know, like top five best backpacks of all time or something. And I probably only used like two at that time. So <laughs> <laughs> cause, cause your background is yeah. not like growing up backpacking. No, no. Uh, I never even camped until, uh, I met my wife. So like growing up outdoors now I'm from Wisconsin, like yeah, outdoors, there's outdoors obviously in Wisconsin, but not like here. So yeah, no, we just, uh, camped like car camped. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Probably back in 2014 or 15 or so, a bunch of, a couple guys and myself just decided we wanted to go backcountry camping. And we did that. And I knew nothing. I didn't know what I was doing. I took, I literally took like a a school backpack, like, like a laptop bag (laughs) and packed as much stuff on it as I could. Like literally strapped like a sleeping bag on the outside of it. We hiked in like maybe a mile, set up camp and. Then I was hooked, absolutely hooked. And then really? I was, yeah, then did, I was all over YouTube. Like, like, did you have like the worst night's sleep ever or anything? Or oh yeah, it was horrible. I tried hammock camping. Oh okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I re- did a little research. Uh-huh. Did you have uh, an underquill or a pad in the? I had a pad. Thing? I had one of those like um, Thermarest, like the Z Light, yeah, yeah. but it was like the one from Walmart. It was like twenty bucks. You know, it right. folds out inside the hammock. So did you lay on it or did it lay on you? It was. It didn't even <laughs> help. Nothing <laughs> helped. It was horrible. I had like some cheap Chinese hammock and bought a tarp off of Amazon for like 20 bucks, barely covered. And it rained that night, which I mm. stayed covered. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that was my first. Yeah. But somehow you liked it. Yeah. Oh man. I loved it. I was, I don't, I don't know. I just was absolutely addicted to the whole thing. I just 
then I went on YouTube and was just researching like crazy. What was it? Like what what made you want to go back? Um bad I don't know. sleep, you know, well, bad, bad 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 gear, it sounds like. I think I realized like um this is camp like this is like the camping that I've always wanted to do. I just didn't know I wanted to do it. Like yeah. I've car camped, but you're always around there's like a 20 feet away, there's somebody else camping right next to you. So there, there's nobody. Mm -hmm. And then you can experience things that you could get out into the outdoors and go places that nobody else will ever get to unless they do this, unless they hike to it. There's a gate. Like there's just an inherent gate anytime you put Mm -hmm. a backpack on and go somewhere and and it separates. Oh, totally. But that's cool. No, that's... Uh, that's pretty interesting. So then from there, you just, you just started backpacking like crazy anytime you weren't, uh, selling insurance, right? <laughs> so, yeah. It's, yep. So I sold insurance and then I, yep. Yep. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I would love to say I did it like crazy. I did it as much as my wife would let me because I came back and she's like, wait, you want to do this again? Like, what are you? Okay. Yeah. Like <laughs> you want to leave me with, uh, our yeah. kids again? Yeah, alone? Yeah, like, <laughs> I want to kind of want to go in a couple weeks, honey. Is that okay? Like, I don't know, maybe every other weekend. How's that? How's it going to work? <laughs> no, it didn't work too well. But and then nobody, I couldn't find anybody to backpack because backpacking by me, it was just it wasn't yeah. really a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, people did it, but you had to find people to actually go with you. Like, did you like, go solo ever? No, I never went. So, I'm not a solo guy. I don't ever want to go solo. I don't have a desire to do it. I'd much yeah. rather, you know, have. I'm a very social person. Yeah. So I'd much rather hang out with people. But yeah, no, I I started buying. Then I started buying gear. Because I would go on YouTube and try to figure out what it was. And then I'd tell people, hey, do you want to go do this with me? And they all thought I was insane. They're like, what? You want to do what? And then I, they, they would tell me, well, I don't have anything to go with. I don't have any gear. <laughs> so that was kind of a, a you know a big wall. Yeah. But, so then I thought, oh, I'll just buy more gear. <laughs> so I doubled my gear. Okay. And I'm, then I'd ask people. I'm like, you want to go? And they're like, I don't have any gear. I got you. Not an excuse. Yeah, no more excuses. Hand them a backpack, and they, you know, reluctantly come with me. Kind of like, kind of like our trip. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, exactly like our trip. So, for those of you don't know, uh, you'll have to go subscribe to Dan's channel, and uh, we we did a video where he used my personal backpack and my personal gear on a trip. Um, So, but anyways, yeah. So you you hand off you hand off your own backpack to your friends. Say let's go, and yeah, and you got a few takers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always got takers. Um, one buddy of mine will still backpack with me to this day, um, but that's about it. Um, burnt through the others? Yeah, burnt through the others. And then, you know, I've converted some people over time. You know, a couple of years later, then, you know, a few more people would come along. And so. Yeah, I mean, I, I can relate to that. Um, my wife was kind of the guinea pig in the beginning of, of my backpacking. And uh, there was a good stint where she just wouldn't backpack with me anymore after just too many... Uh, bad tests you could oh, say man. yeah <laughs> um so no it's good it's good that some stuck through but i'm sure you, you have a long list of friends dan that you can you can churn and burn you know yeah well my my wife will go yeah she will go she's gone a couple times but no she's not she'd much rather we rv camp too she'd much rather right sleep in a nice big comfy bed at night so you not only sleep in a tent yeah. and a, and Used to sleep in a hammock. Yep. Not much hammock in no, anymore. No. But you also have an RV. I do. Yeah. And we RV as much as I go backpacking at least at least once a month somewhere. Do you get do you get hate for that? I mean, is that like no negative? To no, cross not that at all. Over? No, I I thought I thought maybe that was going to happen, but no, no. I think like um, my crowd is that you know they're not they're just the average guy. They're the you yeah. know the weekend warrior, and a lot of those people do that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. Uh, I think I was talking to Peak Refuel, and they talked about how they've got this concept of everyone meets at the watering hole, right? Like, like hunters, fishers, backpackers, whoop, uh, you know, whatever it is, they all meet at the watering hole. And I feel like that's that's a culture we even here at Outdoor Vitals talk about a lot because everyone in the office has different hobbies within the outdoors right. that we all right. participate in besides just backpacking. Right. right? So. No, I think that's cool. I we have a camp trailer. We go out as well with my family, um, especially with the young kids. That was that was kind of the deal breakers when it was like we need a camper to get my wife and kids out there because yeah. it's just so yeah. difficult with yeah. little kids sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I think the overall experience is what you're going after anyway. I mean, it's like it doesn't matter if you're backpacking or RV. I mean, just get outside and do something. You know? Yeah. So um, we touched on this for a second, but uh, before YouTube, what were you doing? Uh, so I sold, 
insurance. I was uh, an account manager for an insurance company for 10 years. And then in 2018, uh, started my own agency. And then in 2019, went full-time YouTube-ish. <laughs> Still kept my agency. <laughs> but YouTube was taken off to the point where I could just kind of hold on to it, uh, the agency. And then in 2020, was it 2020? I don't know. It's been like a year and a half. I've been nothing but YouTube. I sold the agency. and yeah. What was that like to step off that ledge? Yeah, have that conversation with your wife. <laughs> yeah, try it. Just try it. Just try it. Hey, honey, I'm selling my career, you know, and I'm going to be a YouTuber. Yeah, it was an interesting conversation. So, <laughs> But, you know, she's got a lot of uh, faith and she's a wonderful woman. I will say that. So, And, and you guys met... Um, through through uh, church, right? You did. Oh some yeah. Counts, uh, you were a counselor. For yeah, I was. Yep. I yep. I was a youth leader at the youth ministry, and uh, she was. Uh, yeah, we met there. Yep. And yeah, that, I feel like that was a, that was a really interesting part. I feel like for me to learn about about you was just that before insurance, before YouTube, and everything, you were you were just really active in church. Doing, I mean, that was your occupation. Honestly, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I was a pastor at a church for nine years. Oh, by the way, that sounded like I like dated some youth girl. No, I did not. Okay, she was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that came out weird. Okay, yeah. So uh, no, we yeah. I, I, then I was a youth pastor for eight years, nine years, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel like you would excel at that, like just being able to connect with kids and <laughs> and, and just have a good time. And yeah, it was and... it was a fun time for sure. Yeah, but I got we got yeah. If anybody's in the ministry, if anybody out there is in ministry, you do experience burnout to a degree. So that's kind of where mm-hmm. that led to. But. Yeah, for sure. I mean, variety is the the spice of life, right? Yeah, so yeah. But no, that's I think that's that's just a really interesting part to kind of get to know your backstory because. Again, there's there's faces out there. Um, who knows? People maybe people see me out there and, and have no idea or don't feel like they know who who I am. Um, but like you know, you, you get to learn some of that background. And it's just like, man, I feel like now I know how hard of a worker Dan is. Selling insurance is no easy task, and right. when you see some of the I'm sure ethics and morals that have been built into you from from just other stages of life, mm-hmm. it's, it's cool to see you're you're just your guy. You're yeah. a guy that like is a good guy and is just out here. Doing your thing on YouTube and and doing your thing outside. Yeah, I'm a normal, normal. I'm, I'm probably not normal. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, whatever. You're, you're cut above the rest. <laughs> you're cut above the rest. <laughs> I've got problems, but yeah. but you are normal. Like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. yeah, which which I think is super cool. Um. All right. So let's let's fast forward back again to to getting into um, backpacking. So where are you learning how to backpack if you're the one bringing? Guys into oh the my picture. gosh, that's such a great question. You man, up books? Are you no? Just oh my gosh, no. Or no, yes, just... I quiz people like crazy. I do do that. I do do that. So uh, experience, getting out and actually doing it, learning things on my own was experience is the greatest teacher for sure. Um, but then you're never going to get better at something unless you hang out with people that do it better than you, right? And I don't. There's no like better way to backpack but there's people that have done it longer and have more experience than you so i try to get around people like that as much as i can and learn from them how do you how do you describe that to someone that like that that experience factor um <clears throat> like you 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 can study you can watch videos read talk to people and you can feel like you're pretty dang knowledgeable right yeah and then it seems like every time you're out on the trail you can you find something oh, or dude, you learn in totally, a different way. Like totally. how, how do you describe that? Totally. I mean, I literally had that moment happen to me just a few months ago. I was backpacking with uh, a guy named Eric Hansen who um, has a backpacking channel on YouTube. Great channel, backpacking TV. And we were out there and I'm just asking him questions and where he came from and all that stuff. And I'm thinking like, I'm going to teach this guy so much about backpacking. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, I used to be a guide. Oh, Okay, used to be a guide. Hmm. Really? What'd you do? Well, I used to backpack, uh, you know, and I, I I did 200 nights a year on trail. <laughs> I was like, I quit. I'm done. Like, <laughs> please. I, I, I was an instant sponge at that point, like soaking up as much information as I possibly could. Like, right, right. You know? um, and what was funny, though, is uh, after the trip, I we talked about that. And he was like, Dan, I kind of felt the same way. And I was like, really? Me? I'm, I'm just like the average guy, just 
kind of learning as I'm doing this. And he's like, no, man, you know everything there is to know about gear. Mm-hmm. He's not a gear guy. So he was looking at all my gear and trying to figure out how he could do things differently and more efficiently and how I would set things up. And I'm just thinking, wow, I had no idea. So I think it's, it's, it's just like the kind of comes full circle in a way, you know, with people and getting around people, but, but getting around people like that, that was, that was so beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, it is, it is interesting. There's, there's two sides to it. Um, and we preach that a lot here that we, you know, at Outdoor Vitals, at least, like we can't just sell gear because that's only half the equation. The other half is is the knowledge and, and stuff to accompany it, right? Um, I know a lot of people that probably have thousands of dollars worth of our gear and still don't backpack, right? right? <laughs> and I know a lot of people that have the worst yep. gear in the world and are out there backpacking. Yep. And so it's, it's, it's combining those two that I think the magic is in. But um, so tell me about like, like a worst case scenario experience and, and how you grew on trail from that. <sighs> like, like what did I experience? That was really terrifying yeah, and like, horrible. Like, like, I think what makes guys like Eric um, Hansen know so much is every time you get out of your comfort zone, like push past something, something unexpected happens or whatever. That's when you grow in life, right? Oh, yeah. Like you get totally like when times get rough, all of a sudden you realize like, holy cow, yeah. I came out of that stronger yeah. from it. Um, so tell me, tell me about something like that, like where you took all this gear knowledge that you have and, and you took it and were like, you're on the trail and you're like, boom, that's where I leveled up. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, there's many, many times. I mean, just I was I used to be claustrophobic, even in tents, hammocks, tents, everything. Oh. Yeah. Like even <laughs> like in a, I, re, I remember vividly being in a three person tent, waking up at 2 a.m. with high anxiety. Like I have to get out of this coffin now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, so <laughs> and just repetition, constantly doing it over and over, forcing myself to sleep through the night. I eventually became like like what was it last? Was it last night? No, two nights ago, we, me and you were on trail, and I was in a one-person uh, trekking trekking pole tent on a slope. Yeah, on a slope, and I was, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, and I thought about that at night actually, sitting there. So that, and then, uh, or uh, I was in the Smoky Mountains recently, and made a rookie mistake. Trusted my backpack too much. I thought it was going to be keeping my gear dry as a Dyneema pack, yeah, and ended up so wetting out because we were in like probably fifteen hours straight of thirty degree rain. And it was miserable. And I had all my gear just completely, I, I had to pack out. I had to pack out. I hiked out five miles in the dark. Well, uh, when you say wet, like like when you pulled out, say you're sleeping Soaking back. wet. It was as if you took a bucket of water and dumped it in my backpack. That's how wet it got. Like, okay. So what happened to, you're in a sleeping bag, I assume. When you pulled that out, like, was it? Was soaked. It, I was could, the, ins- the inside the insulation soaked as well? Oh, yeah, totally. I could wring it out. I wow. could literally wring it out. Yep, it, everything. No loft, no loft really at all? Um, There's probably a little loft mm. in some areas, but I it the, the what happened was is it had rained so much, and the temp was, at this time I was sitting in my tent, it was probably maybe 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Just almost slamming. And it was supposed to dip like another 10 degrees, and I was not going to take a chance. I was five miles from the truck. And it's dark. It's middle of December, so it was like probably seven o'clock at night. You know, pitch black. Yeah. And I'm like, either I, I can either just sit here and prove to everybody how manly I am and make it through the night and risk hypothermia. But how stupid! What? So I, I was like, this is. I'm not doing this. There's no way. I, I, I packed up and just hiked out and yeah, got to a hotel. Froze. It was a horrible hike out. It was it was miserable because it was raining the entire time. Right, and you're in the dark, headlamp. On. Yeah, headlamp, I, fog. You know, through the clouds because we're up probably about six thousand feet. It was really foggy. I could only see maybe twenty feet in front of me. Pouring rain. The uh, the trail turned into a river because that's where the water goes. Least resistance. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that was awesome. But anyway, <clears throat> rookie mistake. I just I just I hadn't used a pack liner. Yeah. <laughs> Big mistake. Well, right, but your 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 fabric was waterproof, but the seams weren't, or something. Right. Yep. Right? Yep. There, everything had been taped except for up by the. Oh, it was it was taped inside. Yeah, it's all taped. Oh up, wow. Yep. Up except for where the the straps, the shoulder straps, meet up at the top. And so when I called the company to ask them what was going, like what could have possibly happened to have that happen, that's Jeez. what we figured out that it must have gotten in there. But it was it was a blue, it was raining. It was hard raining. Yeah, it so had it to have been if, if mm. one seam could let that much water yeah. in. So, yeah, wow, yep. that is that's impressive. Well, I've had I've had frostbite twice, and you don't need to. Have it. <laughs> it's not an experience you need to have. Yeah, uh-uh. so I'm good. 
um, hiking out was probably a, a wise choice in that scenario mm-hmm. for sure. But, but so what, what do you take away from something like that? Like what, 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 uh, what do you take away? And then like, why do you go back out again? It's a man, exactly. Why do you go back out? Why would you ever? Because <laughs> you do went out that? the next day, if I remember. I did. Yeah, I woke up that next morning and just hiked right back out, and yeah, and so, most of my gear was still wet. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, so. I tried to dry it out as much as I could in a hotel room, which it did. A lot of it did. Actually, the down actually dried out. I was really surprised. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I don't know. I just it's because those those are those are just. Um, that's the worst case scenario. That rarely happens, that kind of stuff, when you're out there, I find. Mm-hmm. And if the weather's bad, it's, you know, you, it sucks, right? But you just kind of, once you've done it enough, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to explain it. I just don't think about it anymore. I don't think about being miserable. I don't think about being cold. I'm just excited to be out there. So, like, if it's pouring rain and it's icy, like, I, I was just in the Beartooth Mountains in Montana and hiking through there, and it was 30 to Probably in the probably in the high thirties, but it rained quite a bit. And a couple, one of the guys I was with, it was only like his second or third time backpacking. He was he was like, "We got to tap out." I'm like, "Dude, we're ten miles in. We're not tapping out." Yeah, <laughs> like it was late at night. Like, there's no way. And uh, yeah, no, it was. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You just kind of just do it, and yeah. then you just the next day is going to be great. You know, and it usually is. Sunny you're glad you stuck out. it out. You're glad you stuck through it, and and now you've got an experience. That you can learn from. Yeah. So have you, have you ever heard like type one, type two, type three fun? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely type two, type three fun for sure. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's definitely not fun, but it's, I don't know. It's, I don't, I, you, nobody goes backpacking to suffer, yeah. right? But you suffer through backpacking to experience the amazing things that, that are out there. Right. Yeah. And, and, and usually you suffer one scenario once, hopefully, if you're smart. Usually for me, it's like four or five times. Yeah. And then you learn how to like make it better for the next time. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that. When you, like when you're, what, what would, what does it take for you to come back from a trail and be like, that was a successful trip. Like I, I accomplished or I got out of it what I hoped all along. Um, so for me, I, I mean, I love being in a place where I can say like, even to myself, I would never experience this unless I took the brutal hike out here to set up camp and be here, whatever this place is. But I also love the camaraderie with my friends and just being out there and sharing that experience. And if I can have that memory of the, the place I'm at, the experience with my friends and just the, the, the escape from just life in general and just all the things and just share that. That to me is a successful trip. I feel like. Yeah. Is it that disconnect from technology or communication or, or like, um, yeah, I think so. I think, cause I think just as people, we get so caught up in just, just the routine of life and out there it's so far from the routine of life. Like, yeah. It becomes if you do it enough, it, it's a routine. But every place you go is always different. So yeah, when when we were just doing the you and a high line, it's it's funny. You know, you get into that groove of like, there's it's just so simple. You get up, you you hike, you eat, you hike, you eat, yeah. you hike, you yeah. sleep. You know, and, yeah. and you just kind of go through this routine, and you're like, man, life gets way more simple when all you have to do is walk and eat, right? And there's not everything else that usually hits you and you know it's not quite that simple but it but it kind of is at some points and and that there's something really beautiful i i would say about being that simple for a minute yeah totally. and having just just your essentials just your gear on your back and, yeah. and that's it and i know that there's people out there that um like for instance um i, I did a poll on my channel recently okay and i i just wanted to know who my audience was and I found out that 17% of my audience had never even backpacked before. And I'm like, 17%? You're watching a backpacking channel and you've never backpacked. Like, what are you? This is a gear channel. Like, what do you, what, right. what's your? So I, I feel like that's people, they see this place. And I think that that's that pinnacle, that place of uh, uh, serenity or whatever people paint it as when you get to camp or the, the hike or just being out in the mountains or the meadows or wherever you're at. 
And I feel like people just long for that escape from whatever they're doing. And so, I don't know. That was really deep. No, that was I, a little too deep. No, that's that's <laughs> like the beauty of it. Oh, it hardly it's it's so hard to put words to it. <laughs> it's so hard to put words to it. But but I I've I believe in this this I don't know if it's a quote or a mantra or something, but it's if <clears throat> as long as you understand the why, you can endure any what. Right. So if you want something bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes to get it. Would be another yeah. way to say it, or, or so on and so forth. And so to me, I have such a strong belief and desire and and pull to go and do these things right that like there really wouldn't be any what that could stop me from right. getting out there right and then you've got this percentage i'm sure that are maybe even listening to this podcast or, or following us on youtube as well that aren't getting there and to me it's like you got to paint you got to help them paint that picture so they do the hard things yeah whether it's acquiring gear finding someone to go with um, planning a trail or route. Yep. there's, there's, there's absolute obstacles to getting out of doing this. Totally. But if they, if they want it bad enough, just like you wanted it bad enough, you'll buy two sets of gear and yeah. bring your friends. Right. Oh man. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, it's so hard to explain to somebody who's, who, who doesn't even car camp. Like you, you, you just say to somebody, I've got people back home, you know, through just life. And you just say, Hey, uh, we're going to go camping this weekend. And they're like, really? You're, you're, you both, do you enjoy living homeless for the weekend? <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, oh, you just want to just, you got to come with me and just see, you know? Right. It's just, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you just turn, <laughs> yep, I do. Sorry. <laughs> yep, see that's you later. Right. Yep, see ya. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and stay here. Have fun. Yeah. So if I was to ask you, like, what, what's what been your favorite trip in the, like, <clears throat> what comes to mind? I mean, it might be recent or whatever, just what um, comes to mind first thing? Man, favorite trip. That is such a great question. I've had so many good trips. Oh, man. First, uh, thing, first, first one. You're uh, not going to name your best ever. But Sawtooth just like the Mountains quickest. in Idaho. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was, and it, it, it was epic from the location. If anybody's never been to the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho, you got to go there. Um, the beautiful place, but all just, I went with just great guys, you know, yeah. and we just had such a good time. I could have been in the middle of a parking lot camping and we would have had a great time, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a good one. Beartooth Mountains, that was probably the most epic place I've been to in the U.S. so far. I've, I have not backpacked outside of the U.S. I cannot wait for that to happen. Yeah. Super stoked to do that. But Yeah. Oh, no. Maui, I, I did some hiking. I didn't do any overnight camping, but Maui, oh. Yeah. That, yeah, was, I, that was crazy. That kinda, I've, I've talked my wife out of Hawaii for a long time, and I'm always like, we can just go to Mexico and get the same experience for half price uh-huh. or something, right? <laughs> yeah. And then recently I was watching a channel that I, that I like, and – they were, I was actually in the past, something came up and he was doing some, some running, some fast packing and stuff in Hawaii. And I'm like, Whoa, yeah, Whoa, that's, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's crazy. I didn't know that. It's another world, man. You got like bamboo forests and remote waterfalls that you can just dive in and, Oh, it's beautiful. Yep. Yeah. It's on my list. It's on everyone's list right now. So therefore it's probably yeah. not on my li- list for the near, near yeah. future just cause yeah. there's a such a wave of, mm-hmm. of uh, Hawaii goers right now, but I've, I've since decided it's worth my time to go to oh, Hawaii. So totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to make that happen for some, some R and D or something. You know? Yeah. Um, so man, where there's, there's a lot of options I feel like to go. Cause there's still so much, um, that, that's inside Dan's head, and, 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 and I, <laughs> you don't you know, want to peek in there. Yeah, uh, well, it's uh, it's a pretty scary place. <laughs> I'll let you filter it, you know, and, and whatnot. But um, what? <laughs> Holy cow! So I, I feel like we can we can talk about like the gear side of like all the stuff you've learned about gear. Um, why don't you take us through a little bit of your journey with with uh, the word ultralight? Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. I came out of nowhere. Yeah, so okay, just super fast. Um uh when I started backpacking, um somehow on YouTube I got uh fed by YouTube ultralight backpacking t- stuff videos. Mm-hmm. And so And you mean like the extreme Yeah, super extreme stuff. Just I mean just or just anything to yeah, just like you got to have your base weight below 10 pounds or you're, you don't know what you're doing. And totally. so, yeah, my goal in life was to do that. And I mean, I was, I, 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 I could get my base weight closer to seven pounds if I wanted to with all the stuff that I have now. And, um, 
Yeah, I just remember getting out there and thinking, why am I doing this? Because <laughs> I wasn't through hiking. I had no desire to through hike. My goal wasn't to get like as many miles in in a day. I could care less about miles. I was there to have the experience. So I, whether I hiked five miles or 20 miles in a day or more or whatever, it didn't matter to me. I could care less about that. It wasn't like, I, I, <clears throat> I just don't like being bored during the day. So <laughs> that's where the hike comes in, you know, and I'll like slow, I'll like fast, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, so you're only hiking to not be bored. Yeah. And yeah. To pretty much from people. I am, I have my brain and my mind literally has like a thousand topics on it at any given moment. And it's, I, ha- I just, yeah. I think most people that, Go out, go out there and create something. Have an element of ADD. I'm sure oh. I've got. Oh man, I, I claim it. My wife. Sorry, what did you, you say? What did you say? I missed that. <laughs> right? no, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I tell my wife that she's like, until you get a test back that says it, I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I I, um, I I just was like, I'm not that person. So uh, then I just was like, I started to be very uncomfortable at night. Um, I wasn't, um, and I know you can be, don't get me, or if somebody's screaming at you. Dude, like, what's the, what's the one piece of gear you look back and you're just like, I can't even believe I tried that. Or like, I used to use that and think it was okay. Oh or, man, that's such a great, probably, probably like there's like the, I, I had this, I used a pillow that was, uh, as light as a Ziploc bag. I filled it up with a straw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> I can't believe I used that. Like I that it weighed like maybe a quarter of an ounce. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but <laughs> you know, I did you did you ever sleep on like a foam pad like the Z light? Oh yeah 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 yeah. You the did Z light. Yep. I you slept, slept on, on a Z light. Yeah, slept on a Z light. Yeah, those are you know like you have to because if you're if you don't you're you don't know what you're doing. But right. Yeah. No. So I uh, and I know there's Whoa. somebody screaming at their podcast. Listen at this screaming at me right now. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. You can be comfortable and be ultra light. Yes, I get it. I know that. But that's not my goal. I could care. I don't care about being ultra light anymore. I just care about. So I don't even weigh my gear anymore. Like I, I know how much my gear weighs individually. So I know how much my, my sleeping bags are, my backpack is, my all the stuff. Right. I know how much it weighs when I buy it. But then when I go to a trip, I don't even think about it. I just slam everything in the backpack that I know. I don't even keep a list anymore. I already know. It's like, I don't have to keep a list. I just know I need my backpack. I need my sleep system. I need my sultra. I need my water filter. I need my ditty bag, all the stuff that's in there. I pick it up and I go, yep, that's about right. Yeah. That's about what it normally weighs or whatever. Then I get out the door and people get frustrated that watch my channel. They're like, how much did your backpack weigh? (sighs) I probably should have weighed it. I have no idea. Right. (laughs) Right. Sorry. (laughs) But like, like if you were just to guess here for a second, Minus your camera equipment, mm-hmm. like what do you think your your base weight is? Like between twelve and fifteen um, yeah, pounds, maybe probably twelve to fifteen pounds. So but that's just because I but, but, be, I have the luxury of having a lighter weight gear. Yeah, based on my YouTube channel occupation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's not like that was my goal. It's just that I have it. Right, but and, but like let's say let's even say it was fifteen pounds, and you think about all the stuff that you bring that that. Uh, ultra like I might call a luxury mm-hmm. item. Like you're going to bring a chair. You're going to bring two yep. pillows. Yep. I bring two, two pillows. pillows. I bring a chair for sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not air pillows. They are full on like puffy pillows. Yeah. You've along the way decided that, that you still prefer a sleeping bag. Yep, um, I do. So you, you've got these touch points where you're, you are purposely choosing slightly heavier options for comfort. Absolutely. And to me though, that's, that's, a great way, and I would still totally classify you as someone who is um, on the spectrum from ult- for ultralight because the pieces of gear you're buying are still ultralight for that category. Absolutely, yes, right? yes. And and you care about the weight, yeah. But but you you add in what you need and, and what you want. And and to me, what I what I typically end up doing a lot of times is I will um, I'll try to get to the ten pound base weight with with all my important stuff, and yeah. then it's like, all right, I'm there. Now, what do I want to bring on this trip? Do I want to chair this trip or do I want a pair of binoculars? Right. Binos, as we call them out here. Yeah. Um, You know, and and I add, I usually end up adding in a a couple pounds back to my pack for things that would make that trip more enjoyable. Yeah. And, and I, I quite like that system and it's, it's similar to, I think what you do. Yeah. So it, I, I sort of equate it to, okay. So I, yeah, like I'll carry 12, 15 pounds easily as a base weight. And then my camera gear is probably another Eight to twelve pounds, depending on what I'm bringing, plus food and water. You wouldn't take my ultralight tripod. I tried. To <laughs> no, not for my camera. <laughs> I'm not risking my camera on there. Uh, you know, so 
I ha- I'll carry uh, upwards of 30 pounds easily on a backpacking trip. And uh, so, so do you, uh, you're in like a frameless pack or? No, I have a frame pack. <laughs> no, I don't know. I never even got into a frameless pack. But like, but I, I kind of equate it to like the person who's looking at backpacking and is scared of it and goes on a first trip. Unless you experience the 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 torment sometimes, right? Um, you know, you like for me, I don't think about the torment anymore, like I was saying before. So I just go, I just enjoy it. It's like now I don't even think about the weight anymore. I just I'm so used to it that I know I'm capable of getting there with everybody else. And it, I don't even think like, boy, if I didn't bring this chair, I probably could have been more comfortable. Well, that's, that's not how I don't really care about that. I'd much rather be comfortable when I get to camp and sit in a freaking chair. Right. You know, because every time I set up my chair, somebody else wants to sit in it. <laughs> I literally packed a chair for you. Yes. <laughs> you, you used it a little bit. And, and one of the times I put it together and went to hand it to you and I'm like. I'm going to sit in this yes, chair. Right. It looks very comfortable. <laughs> He's not even paying attention. He's looking over there. Yeah, I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's there's so much that we get taken away from that because um, everyone, to me, and, that, and that's why, like, our motto of, like, live ultralight, it's more of the process. It's it's an active, like, actively living ultralight means for every different scenario and, and every decision you make, you just choose the lighter option. Right. But, but you're still living, you're still doing, you know, yep. there's, there's choices every day. So, um, I, I see, I think the only time that I cringe is when I see people that have like the 75, oh, yeah. and no, packs. Totally. you know, those, those I'm like, we can really help you guys. But, but you know, if you're, if you're 15 pound base weight, you're doing a great job. And, and here's something else. How tall are you, Dan? Six, two, six, two. I'm six, two. Yep. Do we fit on normal pads very well do no, we you know do we have regular length nope. sleeping bags do we have <laughs> nope. you know do we have extra small jackets and so a lot of these guys that are posting videos of seven pound base weights or whatever they might be you know like like derek in our office's yeah. size you know where yeah. where he might be 120 pounds soaking yep. wet um yeah you know and, and so there's there's just factors that all sure. weigh in and so i i agree don't get so hung up on the weight peel back the weight as much as you can look at it add the items that you want to add yeah, because right. you want and need them and you're going to be happy with it. I look at it like when I go on a backpacking trip, if I didn't use something, that wasn't something like uh, like a med kit. Like yeah, you're yeah. always going to take a med kit, right? right? But if I didn't use something, then I don't bring it the next time. Like it's – I'm never – I'm not packing uh, stuff that just because I'm afraid, like oh, I might have to use this. I might. What if my lighter doesn't work and I need 12 fire steels now or whatever? Totally. You know. Yeah, uh, you know, you're not packing extra. No, you're using no, 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 every no. Piece. Yeah, I'm using every piece. So to me, and I don't, you know, it's it's what I enjoy. If you don't like it, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've never had anyone comment on your oh, channel. Oh uh, no, never <laughs> say anything like that. I'm, I'm, no, yeah. that never happens. I don't get trolls. What? Yeah, no kidding. They don't exist. I don't think on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> but um, no, I think that's a big part. I think this summer too, um, like. I feel like I can go out on the trail and even if I had a heavier pack, I feel 10 times better from some of the training I've done or preparations. Yep. So that's, that's just a big factor too. That was the tip I should have hit. Oh, so Dan had this video we put together, uh, free ways to yeah. Save weight on trail, save weight on trail. you know, I guess you, we said we didn't want to like talk about losing weight, but even if you didn't lose weight, if you just, if you just <clears throat> trained a little bit, that, that yeah. backpack will feel lighter. Oh, totally. That's fun. Yep. Cause this year I, I lost a, I lost, you know, some weight and absolutely noticed it when I was hiking for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even doing, uh, I've got a friend named, uh, Carl, uh, that will put on a backpack and he'll load it up. Like he'll like put it heavy. Like let's say he puts 30 or 45 pounds or something in it. He'll go grocery shopping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a totally normal guy. Yeah. Um, nothing strange about that, but <laughs> yeah, he'll go grocery shopping and, and just, just wear the pack yeah. and, um, you know, occasionally security will stop him. But other than that, <laughs> he, what it is, is he just, his body will get used to having a load on. And then mm-hmm. when he goes and hits the trail, he just feels better. And, right. and the pack is going to feel lighter anyway. Right. So if you, if you train at 45 pounds and your pack is 25 pounds, you'll still feel better. On right. The trail, yeah, right? Totally. So, Anyways, that might be getting onto a tangent, but Carl, <laughs> you're, you're a stud. Um, I need to be more like you sometimes. Um, dude, 
that I feel like we've covered a lot here. What what the heck are we missing that, that we people missing? don't know about Daniel Bartholomew? Becker? Oh man, well Bartholomew is not my middle name. I know <laughs> that. No, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just a regular guy and do regular things and just happen to love backpacking. So if you like that stuff too, then yeah. What, we'll what, what can people expect from if they were to go follow you or what, what can people expect in, in the next year of Dan Becker? My, What's next? Yeah. Oh, next year. Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. I don't even know what I do next week in life. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, my, 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 my focus on people in my channel, my audience is I want the average person to be able to get out there and do this. I don't want them to feel like they have to look at some, you know, Oats and honey looking dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, the guy that lives in his van his whole life. And if you live in your van, I'm not making fun of you. But that's typically what people think of when they're thinking of backpackers, you know, the vagabonds and all that stuff. And it's, I just want everybody to realize that that this is totally a, a normal thing to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> normal thing. Yeah. I want the average guy to be able to get out. You know, I want I want the I'm an average guy. I'm a weekend guy. I don't really I just like going out and having fun and getting out in the backcountry and. It's like if you That's my if, if you hang up YouTube in twenty years from now, what do you hope? What do you hope you accomplished? I Just hope that? I hope that um, <clears throat> I hope that I got people out to experience things that they never thought they could experience before. Yeah, that's what I hope for sure. Yeah, no, I I resonate with that a lot. Okay, um, been going about an hour here, uh, and I I feel like. Hopefully, I've pulled some things out that maybe people didn't know about you before. Deep, deep dark stuff. Yeah. A um, couple fast questions, I guess. Um, number one thing, if, if you've got a person who's got terrible gear, first thing you tell them to change. First thing I tell them to change would be their probably would have to be, oh, my gosh, why'd you do that? Uh, shelter. Change your shelter. shelter. Yep. Okay. Yep. Change your shelter. That'd be first. Um, yep. Uh, you've, you've, you were out here doing a little bit of testing of gear. Mm -hmm. Um, f favorite piece of OV gear, favorite piece of oh, oh, the, the jacket, the jacket that I just tried out. Was, oh, really? Oh my gosh. It was so good. Oh, other than the Ventus hoodie. Okay. Ventus that's been or a, that's the, been a favorite for a long so he, time. He was testing a, a jacket, the, the Nova pro, um, but we've got a couple jackets that will be coming out and you got, you got some, that was on. super good. Yeah. Okay. And you've, and the Ventus. Okay. Which also. You you were here a day when the Ventus arrived at the warehouse. Yeah, so that was a lot of boxes. Yeah, we'll be they're receiving it right now. And I'm really tired of hauling them in the warehouse that you made me do. <laughs> yeah, you had to unload the container. Yeah. First first tip that you would give to someone who's never backpacked before. Don't pack your fears. Okay. Yeah. Don't put things in your backpack. Just because you're afraid and you think you're going to use it. Only put stuff in there that you know you're going to use. Okay. Bucket list hike. Like just one that's uh, on a pedestal uh, for you. Uh, Banff, maybe, um, in Canada. Uh, Patagonia. Okay. Okay, sorry. I could go on forever. But, yes, those two probably. And, and your, your third most. Oh, 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 enchantments <laughs> in Washington. If you if anybody lives in the enchantments, please take me there. <laughs> okay. Um That might be it. I was gonna. I was gonna go on like a. How many? How many people ask you for YouTube advice? Like, a, oh, it used to be a lot, but I, yeah, filtered it. Yeah, I've, I got a good filter in place, but it was usually almost every other day. Yeah, <laughs> somebody was asking me some. Okay, yeah. I actually put a paywall up at one point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> through Patreon. Yeah. yeah, it's a good. It's a good way. At the end of the day, there's, you've got over a hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, you, you can't quite have conversations every single one. No, of them, it's so. tough. I wish I could though. Yeah, I believe you too. You would if you could. I would. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where do people go? Just go visit Dan uh, Becker yeah, or yeah, is there yeah. other places? you have a book you're writing? Or oh, like that? you shouldn't read it if I do write it. It would be terrible. But yeah, Journal no, just Dan uh, Becker. type Dan Becker, Tan, Dan, Tan Becker. Tan. Tan, tan Becker. I wish I was a Tan Becker. Ban Becker. Oh, maybe after yesterday. I got sunburn. Um, yeah, no, Dan Becker on YouTube. Just type it in. I'll pop up. There you go. Find me there. Yeah, I got an Instagram, but I don't really do much there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Depends yeah. on, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dan, really appreciate it. We'll yeah. go ahead and close out the podcast. If you uh, found some value in this, make sure you share it with some friends. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you haven't yet, make sure to review the podcast. And with that, 
Uh, We'll see you uh, on the next podcast. Peace.